10 random magic cards rated day number 80 everybody congratulations it's thursday <laughs> congrats to making it to thursday jungle hollow is our first card of the day it etb's tapped and when it does so you gain a life you can tap it to add black or green to your mana pool what do you give these gain a life tap lands i play this card specifically in commander right now i play it in dina because it gains life right <laughs> so you want to play it in dina but these aren't good in most decks. <laughs> I'd say there's probably better options, but if you're, you know, casual budget commander player, you might find room for these in a deck or two, and I'm one of those, and I have. <laughs> so I can't give them too low of a score. I will give these a 5.5 5, because they're dual lands. Um, but that's about it. <laughs> the only reason. Um, we'll move on to Evolving Wilds. We've done this card before, and I believe it got a 5.5 5 as well. <laughs> <laughs> a Johnny, ooh, a Johnny Nactal Pariah over here. One of the, maybe the, the best Nakatl ever printed, uh, wild or otherwise. This is two mana. One and a white for a 1-2 legendary cat warrior. When it ETBs, put a 2-1 cat warrior creature token into play. Whenever one or more other cats you control die, you may exile a Johnny and return him to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. He becomes a Johnny Nactal Avenger. This is a three loyalty legendary planeswalker. Pay uh, two or plus two loyalty, rather. Plus two loyalty to put a plus one, plus one counter on each cat you control. You can also zero a Johnny to create a 2-1 white cat warrior creature token. Then if you do, if you uh, control a red permanent other than a Johnny, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target. That is a zero. Create a creature and remove a guy or just go face. Like, that's that's a zero ability. Minus four. Each opponent chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents they control. Sacks the rest. So, pseudo sweeper. Pseudo sweeper. While also uh, going face and, and taking out creatures and, and other planeswalkers. Creating creatures. While also uh, putting a plus one, plus one counter on your team if your team is cats. Um, goes really well with Ocelot Pride. Obviously, people are curving one into the other, but just good with cats and good by itself. Just good by itself because it's a three, a two minute creature that puts three, three worth of stats into play on two bodies, and that is just good. That is just good. You can sacrifice the cat, you can block with the cat, and just turn him over just like that. So this guy can be in play on like turn two and a half, you know, turn three, which is just insane. Um, yeah, Johnny's very good. Uh, and again, his price tag reflects that. He's like 20 bucks or more to get your hands on a copy of this guy. Um, fantastic magic card, dude in multiple formats, not just commander, you know, there's a modern card right now for a reason. So yeah, a Johnny, I have to give you like a 7.5. Um, just an absolutely busted, just absurd magic card that they, they knew would be absurd when they made it, they made it to be absurd. And it always gets like, you know, an extra 10th of a point for me because it cares about cats and is a Johnny, <laughs> like my favorite, you know, character kind of in magic. I think he might really be big fan. Um, card is ridiculous that it's, it got printed in the first place. Um, why <laughs> nobody knows, <laughs> but it's, it's here and it's very, very good. Uh, undeniably. Ooh, it's Mindstone. Yeah. Originally printed in Weatherlight, I believe. Let's See if I'm right. I'm right. All right. This is two mana for an artifact. Tap to add a colorless to your mana pool. Or pay one tap and sack it to draw a card. Wonderful. Phenomenal magic card. Absolutely phenomenal magic card. Um, Kind of one of my two mana rocks of choice in Commander. You see a lot of two mana rocks in Commander. You know, sometimes talismans or whatever because they produce both colors that you need. But... I am very partial to Mind Stone. Even if I am playing other rocks that produce colors or whatever at two mana, Felwar Stone is another favorite of mine. Um, I will still find room for Mind Stone a lot of the time. I think it's one of the best two mana rocks ever printed in the history of Magic. Um, just phenomenal Magic card. Really, really is, dude. So I'm going to give this a six. And I mean every word of that. Every single mathematical point of that point, I think the card deserves. I was thinking 5.7 at first, so I did boost its score a little bit. But Mindstone goes into, like, basically every commander deck I build. So I think it's a step better than most two-mana rocks. Cold Steel Hearts and stuff like that. I just think it's a, it's better than most two-mana rocks. Um, even if it doesn't produce, you know, mana of color, I still think that it's really, really good. I really do. But Yarok, oh, boy. Boy, oh boy, it's Yarok. Can I get to a one that looks normal? Yeah. Yarok the Desecrated 
is an awesome commander. <laughs> this is a five mana, two and soul tie colors, black, green, blue for a three, five legendary elemental horror with death touch and lifelink. Wow. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So crazy. <laughs> just, and not just creatures, any permanent entering the battlefield causes any other permanent you control to trigger a thing. Um, nuts. <laughs> so super cares about, uh, enter the battlefield triggers even more than a panharmonicon does because now it's any permanent that triggers anything. And it's just, God, it's crazy. Really good commander, dude. Like having a panharmonicon in your command zone is sick. Having it in this color combination is sick. Having it have death touch and lifelink is a little bit overboard. Just card is so good. Has a huge butt. Doesn't die to that much removal can block a lot of stuff. And just absolutely untenable magic card. Um, one of my favorite sort of, you know, it, I want to build around it someday kind of commanders. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's going to happen eventually, um, but has not happened yet. I really like Yara. I'm going to give this card a 6.5 because again, we're mostly rating for casual commander and I like Muldratha. I'm a big fan of Muldratha, but if I had to build a soul tie commander, I think this would be my first choice with Muldratha very, very, very close behind. <laughs> but yeah, this Yark is insane. Insane. It's gone on to be like kind of an iconic commander and we all see why, right? You see why. <laughs> Card is absolutely busted, dude. Just, ugh. just want to keep looking at it. It's it's really, why does it even exist? But I'm glad that it does. You know, it's one of those. But next is Wreck Hunter. I don't think, I know this card. This is two black mana for a 2-2 human artificer with flash. When an ETBs, choose target player. You create a tapped power stone token for each non-land card in that player's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Oh, okay. Okay, so after combat, you flash it in on their turn and make like two power stone tokens because two of their guys died or something. Um, also note that tokens count. Uh, you know, tokens touch the graveyard, so if they did, um, and they do, by the way, I always get pushback on that. Tokens absolutely touch the graveyard. So, it doesn't say non-token. If they sacked a bunch of treasure tokens or something like that, then you get a bunch of power stones, and that's kind of cute. Um, you can also choose yourself, I've just now noticed. So, if you sacked a bunch of, to of treasure tokens, that's even better. If you sack a bunch of treasure tokens or you lose a bunch of creatures in combat, or you get hit with a sweeper, um, then you can flash this in and get a bunch of power stones. So, like, that could be a ton of mana, but obviously power stones are only good in, like, certain situations. I still like this thing, though. Um, Brothers War Commander, huh? I don't look at Commander product often, which is probably why I haven't seen this card, but it is a little impressive. I could see a bunch of spots where this is pretty good. So, I don't know. Uh, ask the audience on this one. What do you guys think of Wreck Hunter? Because I'm all set to give this like a 5.1, but I don't know. It could be better. It could be worse. I think it's a bit situational, but that situation shouldn't be too hard to trigger. And it shouldn't be too hard to want power stones for whatever reason. Activated abilities, casting artifacts, whatever. So I think I'll give it a 5.1, but I am really interested in what you guys would give this one. Because I'm not too sure. But next is Wolfkin Bond, a uh, bad card. Five mana, four, and a green for an aura that enchants a creature. When it ETBs, you get a 2-2 two, two wolf creature token, and the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. This is just kind of fine. I remember this scene play in, like, limited a good bit, but <laughs> outside of that, nothing. It's just way too expensive. Uh, 1.9. You know, if you get blown out, it's just terrible. It costs way too much mana. Take Vengeance is two mana, one and a white for a sorcery. Destroy a tapped creature. Why is it sorcery? Why is it sorcery? I guess if it was instant speed, you could just like catch their dude attacking before it does combat damage to you and blah, blah, blah. It's still don't love it. It is, I mean, it's not unconditional. The condition is they have to be tapped, but it doesn't care about their power, toughness, casting cost, whatever. And I guess that's okay, but still, these, these are always like slightly worse than they look, I hate to report, but it is kind of is what it is. So I'll give this a four and be done with it. Let's move on to Stab Wound, neat card. Uh, let's look at the Wilds of Eldraine Enchanting Tales when I like it. This is three mana, uh, two and a black for an R that enchants a creature. The enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. At the beginning of the upkeep of the enchanted creature's controller, that player loses two life. So they lose two life a turn if Stab Wound doesn't just kill their guy. And that's neat. That's actually kind of neat. Um, and I wish that we like actually like could play this in standard, but we can't. 
Because <laughs> it would not to say it would be good. I would just like want to try it in like a weird like mono black, you know, leech their life from them slowly every turn kind of thing. I always like decks like that. But stab wounds cool. Um, I have to give this like a four point three or something. Um, you know, it it triggers you know eerie and constellation and other effects like that to care about enchantments, enchantress effects. It's an aura for like Arietti and stuff like that, or Ariette. I think you're supposed to pronounce her name. There's a couple of different versions of Ariette now that might like just the fact that you have auras out. So there's spots for Stab Wound, and I can't rate it like super duper low um, just because it has like specific decks it's pretty good in. But moving on to Ink Fathom Witch, printed in Shadow Moor. This is two mana, one and a Demir hybrid for a 1 1 Merfolk Wizard with fear, meaning it can't be blocked. Except by artifact uh, creatures and or black creatures. You can pay four mana, two, a blue, and a black. And each unblocked creature becomes 4-1 until end of turn. See how it works with itself? That's kind of cute. Um, and also, that's kind of, when you think about it, that's a neat ability. Uh, activated ability, you know. You can just play a bunch of unblockable guys. You get an like, unblockable commander. What's a, not Kaito Shizuki. That's not the name of the card. It's, is it a Numazawa? I think it may be a Numazawa. But yeah, it's like a one and a blue for a guy where, like, all your creatures with power or toughness, a certain number or less, are unblockable. That guy. Ink Fathom Witch. That would work really, really well with that guy. Um, and I love that dude. It sucks I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. But he's awesome. Like, we'll we'll hit him eventually, and I'll be like, yes, this guy. <laughs> he's the commander I want to build. Um, I guess you... I don't. I think that guy's mono blue, so I don't think you could actually play this in that deck, which sucks. But... Well, you know, you, you get something going. I really think you could cook something with this. I really do. Uh, but I'm, I can't score it more than like a four. But I am very, very intrigued by the activated ability. I really am. I want to do something with that like pretty bad. I like it. The final card of the day is Divine Sacrament, originally printed in Odyssey. This is three mana, one and two white for an enchantment. White creatures, not just white creatures you control. All white creatures get plus one, plus one. Threshold. White creatures get an additional plus one, plus one. So as long as there are seven things in your yard, plus two, plus two, eh, well, you're aggro. So you probably won't get threshold very quickly <laughs> unless you have a very specific way of doing it. You know, a creature with a high power toughness for its casting cost that also mills cards into your yard. And that's kind of tough to come by. So I'm not too sure about it, but, you know, just glorious anthem in a way. Um, at the floor of the card is fine, so long as you're mono white. But sometimes you'll play against other white decks, and the card is basically null and void, right? Just not great. So, eh. I still have to score it okay, but it's not great. I'll give the card a 4.6 and kind of leave it at that. I think as far as anthem effects go, you could do better, but, you know, obviously you could do worse. It's just a redundant copy of Glorious Anthem and certain, like, mono white commander decks that in commander almost certainly will eventually give all your guys plus two plus two and that's pretty good so maybe i'm actually rating the card too low here but i think that it in practice it's going to be a pretty unimpressive anthem effect some of the time so under five definitely for a card list i think but let me know how you felt about all the stuff today everybody it was a pretty good is it thursday hold on everybody so if that was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, 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 it absolutely is. So I will see you guys tomorrow. It's almost Friday. Can you believe it? I'll see you there. Bye. <laughs>